Hey guys, welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Mining Channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at the Minis Forum MS-01 that I've got here. Now, right off the bat, let's get the disclaimers out of the way. This video is not at all sponsored. Minis Forum didn't send me the unit. I don't have any affiliated links or anything like that. I bought it with my own money. However, I might come across slightly biased. And for those of you that are new to the channel, I actually have, with this one now included, I actually have four Minis for a mini PC. So <laughs> I've bought them a couple of times. I bought my first one probably two years ago and it hasn't given me a problem since. And since it was working and I ran out of capacity, I just bought another one and another one. And so here we are, this is the fourth Mini Sforum Mini PC. So I've got a couple of them, I've got a, a good opinion. Uh, again, I don't really care if you are getting a competitor's brand, so maybe Gcom or maybe uh, those ASRock Mini PCs. So there's lots of different alternatives. And again, if you're getting those at a good deal, absolutely consider it. But this MS-01 is slightly special and I'll show you guys why. Now, what the hell are we going to do in this video? Well, this video is not going to be a review of the MS-01. If you're interested in a review, this product has been out a while, so probably at least a couple of months, if not six months. So there is tons of videos out there with people doing a fantastic job reviewing the MS-01. People like Serve the Home, uh, Wendell Tech, um, Ray Dow, um, Jeff's Garage. So there's a whole bunch of people that's already done a great job reviewing the product. So I am not going to do that. What I am going to do is I'm going to have a look at uh, or explain to you guys why I like these mini PCs, what I'm planning to run on it, talk about what hardware am I going to put in. And I also wanted to have a look at once I've got everything up and running and if I can get all of these non-supported things up and running, I wanted to have a look at the power draw because the review unit that a lot of the reviewers got is not the one that I got. Now, as I mentioned, the MS-01 or Mini Swarm MS-01 comes in various different models and configurations that you can go ahead and get. The one specifically that I went with is the 12600H. Now, they are uh, or there is a 12900H model and also a 13900H model. Now, the reason why I didn't go with the 12900H or the 13900H is, well, price. <laughs> the price on the 12600 was fantastic. And again, if I look at my own personal uses of these mini PCs over the while, I tend to run out of storage space and RAM and not necessarily cores or threads in that matter. So at least for me, and again, I don't know what your workload is, but for me is with these mini PCs, I run out of RAM and storage way before I run out of pure CPU or horsepower. So that's the model that I went with. On top of that, there was a couple of complaints. And again, this is the good thing if you're getting a unit not on launch day, there is a couple of months has gone by. There's actually a ton of forums where you can speak to or people are comparing hardware and they're sharing the experiences. Also on top of that, Minis Forum has got a Discord and there's a specific Discord just for this unit where people can talk about either compatibility or issues that they have. And again, if I look back at some of the messages that I've been looking at over the last couple of months since it's been launched, a lot of people had issues with the high higher core con models, mainly with it freezing up or the temps getting high. There's even a video on YouTube where people are liquid cooling it to try and get stability out of it. And again, those are um, the higher core count or the 12900H and the 13900H. And again, Intel, at least on those high-end SKUs, uh, they are not having a great track record, at least at this specific point in time. So I went with the 12600. Again, the main reason I'm not going to say uh, I absolutely, if I felt I needed to spend the money, I probably would have gone for at least the 12900H, uh, but this model was very cheap. Now, again, uh, as I mentioned, in terms of cores, what am I getting? Specifically in this model here, you're getting the 12600H, which comes with 
a configuration of P and E cores. Again, I'm not a massive fan of this model that Intel went with with the P and E cores. Um, the issues that it creates with scheduling, specifically in Windows, not that I'm going to run Windows on here, but um, what you get is four P cores and eight E cores. So all in all, what you get is about 16 threads. So the four P cores, they will have hyper-threading enabled, so that will be eight threads, and then the eight E cores, um, that gives you 16 threads. I think at least for what I'm planning to put on here, that should be more than enough, or at least I hope so. Again, if I run out, I might get another one. Now, what makes the MSO one really so special and so different to all of the other mini PCs that I have? And the big thing is the back IO. <laughs> That's probably what makes it the most interesting product out there or differentiates it from anything else. At least if you've seen something like this, please let me know in the comments. I'm interested to to look at that product as well. But the rear IO, at least in my opinion, is the thing that makes it super special. Why that is? Well, it comes with two SFP Plus ports. So for 10 gig net networking, yes, that's two SFP Plus ports. It also on top of that comes with two 2.5 gig NICs. <laughs> One of them has Intel's vPro. Now, what vPro is, is similar, again, if you've got servers and you've seen some of my other servers that I've got here in the garage, uh, it's got vPro is just Intel's equivalent of IPMI um, that I have on some of my super micro boards. Now what that is, it allows you to go into the BIOS over the network without having to be plugged in. So it's pretty cool, you can manage this stuff remotely. In my own experience, at least for IPMI <laughs> that I have here, I'm so close to these computers, I just plug in there. Uh, so I don't fiddle in the BIOS. Also on top of that, not that much. It's really only for patching or updating or stuff like that. So I don't access that feature that much. Um, on top of that, it also has got two Thunderbolt connections. Yes, two Thunderbolt connections. Now, a video that if you are interested that you should definitely check out is what Jeff Garage did with his to Thunderbolt port, so he actually bought three of these. I can't remember if he bought a higher uh, core count model, um, not sure, but if he, he's used the USB networking for an internal Ceph network. So he's got a three node cluster with Ceph and high availability, and he's using the USB uh, or the Thunderbolt connection as extra networking. So it's a pretty cool video and it is super fast. On top of that, there's USB galore. Um, there's a bunch of USB 3, 3.2 ports, there's 3, 3.1, and then there's USB 2 in the front. So there's lots of IO, but at least the IO from a networking point of view is the things that actually stood out for me probably the most. Now, what the hell does it have internal? So I'm expecting it to be a little bit bigger than my other mini PCs. It's probably still going to be tiny. And again, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet, but internally there's a couple of things that are different. Now, again, if I compare it with all of my other mini PCs, normally the other mini PCs has got one NVMe port and one SATA connection. Some of them might have two NVMe ports. And again, they can take two sticks of sodium uh, memory. So that's typically what you would find on some of these other mini PCs, or at least all of the ones that I have bought from Minisforum before. Now, what the MSM one has that is slightly different to that is it will have at least two NVMe slots and then potentially a third one. The third one, um, so the NVMe slots are different speeds, PCIe Gen 3, unfortunately, but the third NVMe slot can double as a U.2 port. So that's the interesting thing. So that's exactly what I'm going to do uh, and making use of that. But technically it could support three NVMe drives. Again, that's a lot more than what any of my other mini PCs has supported. On top of that, it supports a half height, half length uh, PCIe Gen 4 times 16 slots. So that's where you can potentially put in a GPU. Now something to note, and it's in the documentation, it's only times eight. So you only get eight lanes. So even though it's a times 16 slot, so it's the, the tall one, it's only supported times eight. 
Um, I've seen people put in all sorts of stuff in there. <laughs> so from GPUs, I think uh, Craft Computing, he tried to put a GPU in. Same with Radal, put the GPU in. Um, other people has put these NVMe drives in or HBA cards <laughs> or SAS cards. So there's a lot of different uh, things out there. And again, that's what makes the MSL1 special. It's, it's so versatile, you can use it um, with so many different things. So again, that's sort of what's different with the MSL1 that at least from a mini PC point of view, none of my other mini PCs supports that. Now let's talk hardware. Now what I went with is the bare bones kit from Minisquorum. If you're interested in getting it pre-populated, I know that they do it on their website and some other retailers like on Amazon, you can get them pre-configured. Specifically for me, I went with the bare bones kit. Now what am I going to put in there and again it sort of alludes to what I'm going to run on it as I have mentioned or not mentioned I'm planning to run all my home services that are critical on here on top of that I also want to have a second TrueNAS server again the main idea of it is to be some sort of backup I've had good success with TrueNAS core but I wanted to go and have a look at TrueNAS scale so that's sort of what I want to put on here and then run everything that I consider production that people are angry if it's not working so things like Plex, Pihole, uh, home assistant those type of services that gets the family angry if they are not running that's what I want to put specifically on here all of the other stuff that I play with practice break take down all the other time that I'll keep running on my other mini PCs and also some of the, the stuff that I write myself so again that's the idea behind this it needs to be a backup server slightly i am planning on getting a synology nas in the future <laughs> i'm just waiting to see what new products do they release so i'll have something dedicated let's say for youtube videos or some other stuff so i know having um, flash or nvme nas <laughs> is overkill for speed it depends on what you want to do with it and maybe i'll use this one for editing i, I don't i don't know so that's sort of uh, the idea that you can get with flash nas so again if you're just interested in raw data stories there's obviously way better options out there but for me as a little bit of a hybrid and in my small garage this is sort of perfect and it gets me playing <laughs> with the MSO one now in terms of hardware what am I going to be putting in there from a RAM perspective I'm going to put in this 96 gigabytes of DDR5 now um, again this is not supported officially it's only 64 gigs so we'll put this in and see if this works I've seen other people that have specified it does work as a boot drive I've just have this 500 gig um, Samsung uh, NVMe so nothing massive there or nothing super exciting what I am going to do is make use of the PCIe 4 port that I talked about um, that is times 8 that's times 16 in length I'm going to put a card like this in here which will give me an extra two NVMe slots now what it came with is a half bracket here so I'll have to put in that so that's what I'm going to use that other slot for then on top of that that then gives me a total of three NVMe slots so what I am going to do is I've got here four terabyte um, gen 4 NVMe's uh, again the slots don't really support it or at least they are all at different speeds and that's potentially one of the the bad things and again if you look at the review of NAS compares he looked at the MSO one as a NAS and he, you know he mentioned some of the pros and cons so I'm not going to repeat that if you are interested in running it purely as a NAS go and have a look at his video he's done a, an absolutely great comparison around some of the pros and cons with that but anyway so that's the the idea here I'll have four or three four terabyte drives that I'll use in here on top of that I am going to talk or use that last slot so as I mentioned um, there's still one slot left and what I'm going to use is this UDA 2 drive so I've got a UDA 2 drive a 7 millimeter drive here it's gen 3 but it's 7.6 terabyte or let's call it 8 terabyte UDA 2 drive so that's all of the hardware that I am going to go and stick in here so let me go down that rabbit hole and go and install it
Okay, so here we are on the computer. Now I've got everything set up and it looks like everything is working. So as you can see here, I've got the latest through NAS scale on. It's recognizing all of my memory here. So that's good. You can see there is the CPU as well, 12600H. Um, at the bottom here, you can see the network connection. There's the local IP and then the 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet, so that's pretty cool. And in terms of storage, so if I go to storage here and create a pool, uh, you can see here unassigned disks. So it's picked up the three NVMe drives and the seven terabyte Euro 2 drives. So all of this stuff is picked up and is ready to go for me to go and set up. So what I really liked and what I didn't like with the installation, it's a bit cramped. So I had to take a little bit of the NVMe extender or the PCIe to NVMe extenders. I had to cut a little bit off there to make it fit, but it eventually fitted. Uh, in terms of secure boot, I just had to switch off or disable secure boot in order to get TrueNAS to install. Uh, but other than that, it's actually been smooth sailing. All of the installation on the NVMe, it's super tight in there. Um, so I'm going to now have a go and create my storage and do all of the shares and do all of the setup. So I don't want to bore you guys with a true NAS video necessarily. But yeah, all in all, it's picked up all of the hardware. So all good for me to complete the setup. That's it for this video, guys. If you've liked the video, please like the video and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't like the video, please let me know in the comments what you want me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.